All right, continuing on. On the front of our blower housing are stamped some very important numbers for us. It's the model type and code. And this is the number that you're going to write down on an index card and take to your parts dealer to get uh, gaskets or carb parts or uh, governor springs, anything that we may need pertaining to this particular engine. And what's also interesting about this is these set of numbers are going to tell us everything about this engine. Let me show you what I mean. Using your repair manual and those numbers that we just got, I've taken the liberty to write it down on a piece of paper. Uh, our model number is 9L502. Let me tell you what that means. If you'll go to your repair manual and your first section go to page 15, you're going to get to a page that says how to read Briggs and Stratton model type and code numbers. All right? And the first number is telling us the size of our engine in cubic inches. And it's a nine cubic inch displacement. Now the larger that number is, the more powerful that engine is. And in a minute, I'm gonna show you how to uh, calculate that number. The next one is the basic design series of this engine, and ours is an L series. Uh, the third is the number five, and that has to deal with the crankshaft, the carburetor, and the governor. So if we go down through these numbers, we'll hit eventually number five, and it'll say that this is a vertical shaft, which means the crankshaft orientation is straight up and down. That's where our uh, lawnmower blade is going to connect, as opposed to a horizontal motor, which would be safer like a rototiller. Um, and you can distinguish the two. If you think about the horizon, horizontal, uh, that'll give you some idea. Our crankshaft would be uh, going horizontally in that instance. Ours is vertically, straight up and down. It tells us that it has a vacuum jet carburetor and a pneumatic governor. Okay, and we'll get into all of that more in a, a little bit. And then it says uh, the type of bearings that we have. are plain bearings. And then the last part of this number is number two, and that has to deal with the type of starter. And our type of starter is the rewind starter. And if you look right here, that's the rewind. As you flip it over, the pulse extend out. We'll be definitely getting into a lot more about that in a little bit. Okay, then we talk about the type. Now the type is uh, the type number identifies the engine mechanical parts, color of paint, decals, governor speed, and original equipment manufacturer. And the last series of numbers is about the code. The code is about the date of manufacture and where it was manufactured. Down here ours was stamped actually by itself. Date of manufacture May 2010. A lot of the times there would be a one and a zero, which would say two, which would indicate 2010, the fifth month, the sixth day of May, and it's in plant five is how you would read that. But how does that pertain to us? What's what's so important? Well, if you watch a lot of these videos, everybody will say, go to your book and find the specs for the torques, uh, foot pounds on how to put down the flywheel or how much foot-pound torque do we need to put the head on and everybody says it but they don't seem to know how to find it or they don't use it they don't but that's where this comes in so important again in the manual the first page in talks about your series of engine now ours is a 90,000 series okay and it tells us for example if it were a horizontal uh, crankshaft, it would have 21 ounces of oil. If it's vertical, it would take 18 fluid ounces of oil. The armature gap 
uh, you're going to find out more about that in a little while, is how far away from the flywheel do we put our coil? And in this instance, it says six thousandths to ten thousandths of an inch. Our flywheel uh, foot-pounds that we apply to the nut on the flywheel is 55 foot-pounds. So when we're reassembling this, this is very important to us. The cylinder head, uh, when we're putting the cylinder head back on, we're going to torque those head bolts down to 140 pounds per inch, inch pounds. Those connecting rods, the two bolts on the connecting rod, we're going to be uh, torquing those down to 100 inch pounds. The crankcase cover or sump cover, we're going to be torquing those bolts down to 85 inch pounds. When we reinstall our valves, we're going to have to adjust them, and this is where we're going to get our adjustments. The intake in inches is going to be 5 thousandths to 7 thousandths, and for the exhaust valve, it's going to be 7 thousandths to 9 thousandths. All right, over here, we're going to talk about the standard cylinder bore in inches and the stroke. Let me show you a little bit more about that. I'm going to show you how to determine for an engine what the displacement of that engine is or how powerful that engine is. <clears throat> We've already said that this is a 9 cubic inch engine. But let's show you how we calculate that. TDC means top dead center, or when your piston is all the way up in the cylinder. And BDC means bottom dead center, when it's all the way at the bottom of that cylinder. The bore is the diameter of that cylinder. Okay? And the stroke was the difference between the bottom dead center and the top dead center of that piston, or the travel of that piston. Okay? In our particular instance, this manual said that the stroke is 1.75 inches and the bore is 2.5615 inches. Now another little interesting tidbit about this, this is our crankshaft with a very bad diagram. These are our weights and this is the crank, okay? And this would be the crank pin journal. This is where the connecting rod is going to connect to. What is important is what we call the throw. It's half the diameter of the crank rod and half the diameter of the crank pin. Okay, That is what our throw is. And that's half of our stroke. And if you think about that, why is that? When it's at the top, okay, that would be our top dead center. Okay. But when this thing rotates down, it's going to be the other half of our, our bottom dead center. So that's why the throw is considered half of your stroke. Okay? Now let's do the math. Okay, to figure cubic inch displacement, you take your bore, which again is the diameter of your cylinder, and in our book it says it's 2.5615 inches. And half the bore, or half the diameter, would be our radius. So you take the 2.5615 and you divide it by 2, and you're going to end up with 1.28. It also said that our stroke was 1.75 in inches. All this is in inches. So using the formula that you had in high school, pi is 3.14 times radius squared. <coughs> We said that our radius was 1.28, so 1.28 times 1.28 is 1.64 times height, which is our stroke, 1.75. So if you multiply pi times radius squared times height, you're going to get 9 cubic inches. And that is exactly what they said this engine was. So in quick summary, the numbers on your blower housing are what we use to get the parts from our small engine parts dealer. It's what we use to look up the information for torquing down our head bolts and our flywheels and anything else that we may need pertaining to this particular engine with our manual. 
And the math is not so important unless you're going to be preparing to take that exam. And you should have no problem with it. I'll catch you on the next one. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this and share it with people if you would. Let's get those numbers going to the million. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.